John, we're on the eve of a teacher's strike in the UK, which um, it's fair to say it's got a lot to do with morale. I mean, it's, it's, it's based on pay and conditions, but really what underpins that is um, very low morale in the profession. Why, why is that? It's a good question. It's an absolutely fundamental question because teacher morale seems to have been slipping a long way down the lead. Let me try and explain it. When I trained as a teacher long, long ago, the, if you trained as a teacher, the chances were you'd want to stay in the profession for 30, 35 years. In fact, some people did, and they saw their life through. Now, that wasn't necessarily a good thing. Some people got stuck in a comfortable job. They were as boring as possible to teach to pupils, and they didn't like it. But we seem to have swung the other way. And with all the requirements now placed on teachers to do things in particular ways, to organise you know, this way and the other, teacher morale has sunk. It's been sinking for 20 or more years. To the point at which now, the average teacher resigns within, sorry, not the average teacher, half teachers resign from teaching within five years of starting. In fact, the average length of time for a teacher is just under eight years. Now, if you phase that out, it means that to provide enough teachers for all the schools, we are actually having to train between four and five times as many teachers as we used to. Now, here's the problem. Government seeking, and this is all government seeking, to get more people into the profession, but doing it on a cheap scale because there isn't the money to do, so we're told, there isn't the money to do what the Finns do, which gives everybody a very good start, and in fact their training runs between seven and eight years. So what we've actually got is a demoralised working force. The response of governments consistently over the years has been, well, let's actually make it simpler. Let's tell teachers exactly what they've got to do and give them the pro formas, and then surely it will work properly. And of course it doesn't work like that, because teachers are, by their nature, creative people. Now, I was a headmaster for 25, 30 years. I think the most successful lesson I ever gave was actually before I even was even qualified. And it happened like this, I was wanting to earn a bit of extra money in the holidays, and there was a secondary modern school near to where I lived. And I got a job at two pounds a day as an unqualified teacher's assistant. I was not supposed to do any teaching, I was just dog's body. One Friday afternoon, the headmaster came to me and said, I've got a terrible problem, I've got seven teachers away, uh, only two of them have left work for the children to do. I'm going to have to ask you to take a double period of 14-year-olds for the whole of Friday afternoon. No textbooks, just go and make a good job of it. So, <laughs> knocking my feet together, I went in and looking for the first red herring I could find, a boy at the back of the class had a book called The Coldest Stories, the story of how prisoners escaped from German prison and war camps. And he said, hmm, can you tell me why there was a war? or words like that. By the time I got to the blackboard, I divided the blackboard into two columns. The events from 1939 to 45 at home, and the events from 1939 to 45 away, overseas. The first lesson went by so fast, these kids were volunteering, things happened here, Uncle Sam did this, and my father did that, and my mother did this, that, and that. Never even heard the bell go in the middle of the lesson. Didn't even hear the bell go at the end of the second lesson, after they'd been there for an hour and a half. About 20 minutes into the rest period at the end, the end of school, the headmaster came back saying, what's going wrong here? Why are these kids still here? They should have gone home. And the kids looked up, totally bemused. Well, this is fascinating. Now, that was a long, long time ago. 15 years later, I was rushing back to King's Cross Railway Station in London to catch the last train. And a porter came up to me and said, hey, you've missed the train. Hey, I recognise you. Didn't you once teach geography, history, I think it was, at Rinsford County Secondary School? I said, well, I was there for three weeks, about 15 years ago. I remember you, he said, because I remember what you said, and this is very important. He said, we're right in the middle of a crisis about the Falkland Islands, and you told us 15 years ago that most wars are caused by clapped up politicians trying to make a name for themselves by creating a crisis. And I said, well... Maybe I said that. He said you did. He said it was brilliant. He said, looking at his watch, we've got another 20 minutes before the works canteen closes. Come round to the works canteen and I'll buy you a drink 
and you can tell my mates why we think we have to go to the Falkland Islands. Now, that was a totally spontaneous lesson. I could not guarantee that you can always do a totally spontaneous lesson, but the reason why so many teachers are resigning is because they're so tied up with all the regulations that says you've got to prepare this in great detail beforehand and you've got to fill in these worksheets. Poor creatures, they've got no room to think for themselves. And unless they can think for themselves, you don't get children who can think for themselves. And there's the crunch.